Good morning and welcome to our worship service this morning. Before we get started, I just want to share a few announcements uh, pertaining to the church this week. Next Sunday is our graduation Sunday where we will recognize our high school graduates. Uh, I encourage all of you to be present with us. Hopefully the weather holds out and uh, we can do our live in-person worship out on the lawn. I am looking for somebody if you are a calligrapher or have an artistic style of writing. Um, if, if you are able to help us this week for our senior gifts, uh, please contact me uh, either by phone or email or contact the office. Uh, I could use your help uh, with our senior gifts this week. Also, Tuesday evening, we're going to continue with our stories on the lawn. Uh, this is exactly what it sounds like. I invite you to come with your families on the lawn at 7 p.m. on Tuesday uh, to hear stories, sing songs, and uh, have a good time. It's, uh, it's a safe, uh, fun way to spend the evening uh, before uh, sending the kids off to bed. Also, uh, this Saturday is a work day at the New Hope build site. Uh, the, they are looking for 25 to 30 volunteers. Uh, there is a sign up on Facebook that I sent the link to via email, but if you don't have that link and would like to help, uh, you can contact Rod Bellows or Betsy uh, Lebo. And uh, it is from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And, uh, that will help us accrue our 500 uh, committed hours uh, for our new hope uh, building commitment. Let's take this time now to prepare our hearts and minds to worship God through the gift of music. <laughs> opening words this morning come to us from Psalm number 8, verses 1 and 3 through 5. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you would be mindful of them? mortals that you care for them yet you have made them a little lower than god and crowned them with glory and honor let us pray almighty god the rock of israel and cornerstone of our common life you are not bound by our visions our structures our politics or our doctrine we cannot predict your coming or going, yet you have given us your story, your family, and your work to do. Meet us in this space, in this moment. Shape us for service in your world, for we carry the name of Jesus, and 
seek to share his love within our community and abroad. And guide us, O oh God, to live by the power of your breath. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Fight the Good Fight. <laughs> Friends in Christ, all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but we have received a spirit of adoption. Let us confess our sin with the freedom of children who know how deeply they are loved. Let us pray. Merciful God, your creatures cry. Creation grows, but we turn away. We surround ourselves with noise. We are quick to excuse ourselves from responsibility. We are young. We are old. We are tired. We are busy. It is hard to imagine that we might make a difference. Life-giving God, wash us clean. Restore our imaginations and our hearts. Let your courage and compassion flow through our veins until we love with abandon and our hands reach out in blessing. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Amen. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel and the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God says unequivocally, Irrevocably, you are my own. You are forgiven. Thanks be to God. <laughs> us this morning from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 through 30 and 36 through 43. He put before them another parable. 
The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds, weeds among the wheat, then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, The enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of the harvest, as we listen to your word, by your Holy Spirit, lead our hearts in the way everlasting. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, if you drive by my house, the only green you'll find in our lawn is that of the weeds. The only flowers you'll find, other than a few pots on our deck, are also that of the weeds. And some are quite pretty, actually. Much better than the brown, scorched grass that we decided to water way too late. Now, I know it'll come back next year, and now that the hoses and sprinklers are in Cadillac instead of South Lion, we'll do a better job next year at keeping our yard watered and the grass green. I suppose we could start pulling the weeds out of the lawn, but then there would be no green at all. It would probably look a lot worse without them. In this morning's Gospel reading, we hear of a farmer who has planted his field with good seed. But late at night, an enemy comes and plants the seeds of weeds that grow among the grain. The servants, troubled by what has happened, want to pull the weeds and fix the field. But the problem is that the weed is most likely that which is called dardal, or false wheat. Unlike the weeds in my lawn, as the darnel grows and mixes in with the wheat, you can't tell the difference between the two until it is ready to be harvested. The weight of the good wheat will cause the wheat to bow down, but the darnel continues to stand straight up. For the servants of the field, they would be guessing at best as to which wheat and what weed to pull. So the farmer tells the servants not to pull the weeds at all, that doing so would disturb, harm, and even uproot the good wheat. Instead, wait. And it will be separated during the harvest. What is surprising about this parable is that there is an enemy that wants to do the kingdom of God harm. That within the kingdom of God, there is divisiveness. Think about Matthew's audience for a moment, that early church that is hearing this parable for the very first time. They're a community that is made up of both Jews and Gentiles, 
Imagine the tension of these two groups coming together, each with their own prejudices and biases, struggling to build a worship community together, where neither one fully appreciates the other. Imagine one group referring to the other as the weeds, and the other group doing the same. Certainly, we can relate to this community as in every generation and in every human circle. It is a tendency to label and to separate. The establishment of dichotomy, dichotomies such as us versus them, good versus evil, conservative versus liberal, are examples of ways in which we attempt to distill our world into two realms. We do it with skin color, with gender, with orientation, with class, and all other isms created to separate and to divide. Now, in the midst of a pandemic, we are split on whether we are caught up in a hoax or wondering just how real this is. Do masks make a difference, or are we being played by some greater evil to strip us of our constitutional rights? When we reduce our worldview to such sharp contrasts, we often lose the ability to see our collective best interests and common goals. Such distinctions often overshadow the shared desire to identify the common good of all people, it most often result in conflict that can easily escalate into violence. The solution to the tendency to divide our world into two is found in this morning's parable. Jesus teaches us, let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat in the vine barn. See, the farmer understands that once they are together, the weeds and the wheat, they must continue to grow together since the destruction of one can lead to the demise of the other. Likewise, our tendency to split our world into two, such as the believer and the non-believer, or sinners or saints, does not help us at all. We are in this world together, whether this world is the planet, our country, our community, or our church. We must grow together and allow God to be the great judge, to do the separating in God's own time. The good news of this parable is that the harvest belongs to the Son of Man, this parable teaches us to stay in our own lane, to do the job and only the job that we have been called to do, and let God, through Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, do God's job. We, friends, are the fruit of Christ's labor. We are not the judge. We are not the reapers. This parable promises that God's job is not our job. We are not the great judge. And frankly, I don't want that job. I don't trust myself. I don't trust my own biases that would slant my decision one way or the other. But I do trust in God. I trust the resources that God has enabled us as congregation to do its job, which is not to judge others, but to see others as Christ would see us, to love others as Christ has loved us, and to use the resources at this moment to serve as God calls us. So at the end of the day, this parable of the weeds reminds us to be patient, that all things will be reconciled in the end by God. And while we wait, Perhaps we can work on the dichotomy of good and evil that resides in each one of us as we all fall short of the glory of God. Sometimes we are good grain, but then we all have moments 
not so good. We all have something that we're not proud of. We all carry those burdens of regret. But at the end of the day, they too make us who we are. We all know while God does not intend for evil, good certainly can come from it. So friends, what do we do while we wait? At this point, I suggest turning to Matthew chapters 5 through 7 where Jesus teaches the Sermon on the Mount, where he teaches us how to live into the gospel, to be the light, to be the salt. This parable calls us simply to be, to be light when darkness will surely try to snuff it out, to be salt when blandness and conformity and acceptability are always easier paths. To be kind and to be just in an unkind and an unjust world. To show compassion and empathy. And to show our love for God and our neighbor by resisting the forces that would deprive those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. To make sure that those who mourn are comforted. To uplift the poor spirit and share the love of Christ with all others at all times because at the end of day of the day depending on what life throws at you or at me you never know if you're going to be producing good fruit or be the weed but every day is a new day and with it a new opportunity let us pray Dear Lord, our lives are colored by ambiguity and we don't always know the right or best thing to do. But we do know that your love is guiding us and you have called us to live as your people in the world. When we face hard choices, give us eyes to see the best path forward and the courage to follow it. When we make mistakes, forgive us. When we are hurt by our choices, comfort us. When we hurt others, help us to reach out to them in love. And above and beyond all these decisions, remind us that you still love us and call us back to this place that we may be forgiven, renewed, called, and sent forth once more as your beloved children. In Jesus' name we pray. Friends, because of the weather, uh, we originally scheduled the Alto girls to dance for us, and uh, they need to be outside uh, to do their dance, and so uh, they promised to reschedule with us, so we look forward to that. But let us continue on with our service with the prayers of the people. I invite you, if you have any prayer requests at all that you would like included in our prayer list, list to contact me, either via email or cell phone or contact your deacon we will make sure your requests are added to our prayers next week and to our prayer chain let us pray gracious creator sower of life you know the complicated histories that have carried us to this moment you know the names of all our generations for you are there in each story of falling away and turning home, in our long years of wandering, and in the shining moments when we recognize your presence and find the grace to worship you. You are no stranger to the striving or the listlessness of humanity. Holy One, all of creation is growing, and so we dare to ask that you would come to us, be born again in this place. In the midst of our boredom, our self-congratulation, our closeted vision, startle us with the tearing, the cry, the first breath of life that will not be restrained. Strengthen us in the fruits of your spirit. Teach us to pray. O oh God, we pray for all who flee from pasts by which they are haunted. 
We lift up all who feel abandoned by a future for which they have hoped. We plead for all who do not know that they are loved and chosen. We intercede for our own divided souls. Help us to trust that you are at work in every mingled heart, every conflicted community. Nourish the life you plant within us that we might keep seeding the world with your truth and your grace. Lord, in our silence, we lift up the names of those who weigh heavily on our hearts and minds this morning. We lift up, O oh God, those names and needs of those who are not known to us, but are only known to you, that you would wrap them in your love, your presence, your comfort, and your grace. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who gave his life out of love for the world. It is in his name we pray. Now, as the children of God, let us boldly pray the prayer together that Jesus taught us. Pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Go, My Children, with My Blessing. <laughs> Before I offer our charge of blessing, I just want to give a big thank you to our musician this morning, uh, Susan Cano, and to our video technician, Ryan Cano. Thank you both for being with me today. And just a reminder that if there's anything at all the church can do for you, even if it's just to talk, please give us a call or contact your deacon. 
We are here to serve you. Now the charge to you is this. Spreads however the dark night gets. Whatever you have stolen or squandered, know that you are held by a love like this. The creator who made you still claims and loves you. The redeemer who died for your sake still lives again by the word of God. The sustainer of all creation breeds new courage in your heart. So friends, the triune God still traffics in mercy. Serve them with boldness and joy. Now go in peace. Amen.